Okay, so uh, today I'm going to go over how to calculate uh, mean squared error, mean absolute error, and mean absolute percent error. Uh, when you're doing a forecast, also I'm going to go on how to do exponential, exponential, I spelled that wrong, exponential uh, smoothing forecasting. So I'm going to go over several things. I'm going to kind of go pretty quick. This is going to be exactly very close to the problem 15.9 in your textbook for those that are taking uh, my quantitative methods class spring 2019. Um, so anyway, normally when you do these type of things, you want to graph it and just see if there's, see if uh, your forecast, when you do your forecast, it makes sense. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to insert a scatter plot. So this is what the data looks like. It's always a good idea to look at your data. Um, so really not making a lot of sense, not any trend or anything. We'll go ahead and apply the, the, the math of this anyway and just see what kind of answers we get. So we're going we're gonna to do something called exponential smoothing. And exponential smoothing has different constants to use. So it wants us to use a 0.1 and a 0.2 con constant. And then we want to use mean squared error to see uh, which one's better. So that's a mean squared error is a method of looking at the error and seeing how good your forecast was and lower is better in all three of these. This means mean absolute error and this means mean absolute percent error. Now this sounds real complicated but it's actually very simple so let me just get right into it here. Um, so we'll go ahead and copy this data down. By the way I'll put this spreadsheet up on my video. I'll try to put a link to it. Uh, it might make sense for you to try to work along with me. In that case you would want to pause the video and just copy this stuff in. That way uh, you can work it along with me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and co I, I kind of did some of the typing already on this. So I'm going to type I'm going to just copy it over to here so that way we can save a little bit of time. And uh, so these are the things we want to calculate. I'm going to do them one at a time. Like I said it looks complicated. But it's not that complicated. This should be error squared. Oh, do it again. Squared. Hmm. Could I square my key? Sorry, I guess it's too dark in my room here. Okay, so there we go. All right, so we're going to do the exponential forecast. And, uh, and it says here in part A to use alpha 0.1. So we're going to first do it for alpha is 0.1. And this is the formula we use. It means the, basically this means the forecasted, uh, forecast for time t minus 1. So I'm sitting here and saying the forecast for the next week, that's what this is on the left, equals alpha, which is what we have here, the 0 0.1, times the forecast, times the actual val value the week you're at, times 1 minus alpha times your forecast value at the, at, the, at, the, at the time you're at. Now, so let's just go ahead and start this. It'll make a little more sense. So I'm going to go equals. Uh, so alpha comes first. So I'm going to go alpha. And I'm going to hit F4 because I want to copy this down. And I don't want to type this formula a lot of times. And I always want it to stay on alpha. So I'm going to go F4. And that puts dollar signs in front. And then times y sub t so that's the time so i'm forecasting week two i'm sitting here at week one i don't have i don't have week two i don't have any of these numbers yet all i have is this week one i just know right now i had 22. so if i forecast for week two is this is going to be this alpha times what i have right now okay uh plus uh parentheses one minus uh alpha again we're going to f4 that to to make that absolute so we'll move and then times, now we're supposed to take it y sub t, the forecast that I had, but I don't have this forecast right now, right? So I'm going to have to use, this is a forecast y, you know, for, for my present time, but I can't I don't have that, so the only best I can do is use this again. So I'm going to start out with that. So I'm going to copy it down 1, and now see it's pointing to, Alpha plus uh, y sub t is the time I'm at right now, plus 1 minus alpha. And now I want this b22. Now I have it here. I have it right here, so I want it to point to here. So the first one's a little bit uh, 
the first one you gotta you gotta kind of cheat on this last term because they're looking for the one above, but you, but you don't have the one above yet because it's the first week. Hopefully that kind of makes sense to you. This one you are gonna use the one above because that's what this y the forecast y, uh, the forecast for time t is the forecast for this time right here. T plus one would be the forecast for here. That's what we're doing. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we just double click to send this down or drag it down. And let's go ahead and format them all for two places. All right, let me just do this way. We'll go two places, two decimal places. All right. Now the error, the error is just, just basically what the actual was minus the forecast. So my error is equal to my actual minus my forecast. And I can just go here and double click to send this down. And then uh, my absolute error is equal to the absolute value. And basically, I forgot my equal sign in front here. It's equal to the absolute value of the of uh, what of the my error. Okay, and I can double click to send that down. Let's do that to two places also. We are error squared. Is this what it says? The squared error. Now, uh, that kind of makes sense. I want the mean of the squared error. That's what that MSE mean. So I'm, I'm actually doing all these so I can get ready for calculating all three of these. The error squared is equal to just what it says. The error is here, and we want to square it. And we'll send that down. And we can have the percent error. The percent error equals the error divided by what we actually had okay and i'm going to click that but it says percent error so i'm going to click up here and make it percent and i'm going to take my percent out two places and then i could say the absolute value of the percent error equals abs and it's going to be that and make that percent take it out two places and send that down. Let's go ahead and underline all these to make them look, uh, make it look pretty. And then we want to sum some things. So I'm going to go down here. I'm not going to sum the error. That's not really something I'm really interested in doing. But but we could sum starting here and go auto sum. And then we can drag this across. And we can have the sum of all these and we're gonna we're actually we don't really even need this sum so I'm gonna go ahead and delete it because we want the mean squared error so that's gonna be the mean the mean of these errors is the mean squared error the mean absolute error is the mean of these errors and the mean absolute percent error is the mean of these errors so these this one I'm gonna make that all so I'm gonna format it the same because that's a percent okay um and that's not underlined is it Okay. Uh, all right. So, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing. This is the beauty of Excel. I can copy this down. I'm going to go copy. I'm going to go paste. I'm going to paste it here. But now we're going to use the alpha equals 0.2. So all I have to change here is my forecast right here. This first one. It's going to be this, but I'm not, I'm not point. I want to want this to point at point one anymore. I want it to point to point two. So I'm going to drag these over. So now I have these pointing to the point two. Hit enter. And if you remember the second equation is a little bit different. So again, I want to make sure points to that. And then we're going to double click this to send this down. All right. And all these other ones will adjust because all we we're doing was just doing this differently. This is my forecast, my exponential forecast. So now I have it for point one and I have it for point two. Now I'm ready to do part A. Okay. So part A, we want to know now I'm going to save a little bit of time. I have it typed over here. We want to know the mean squared for alpha equals point one. Well, this is very simple. The mean means average, so it's going to be equal to 
this divided by, and when you're doing the average, is the number of these. And if you're going to do the number of something on Excel, instead of counting it, I'm just going to count, have Excel count it. I'm going to say count the number of these. That's what this count function means. And then that's my average. And we could format that to two places. That's probably fine. And let's go ahead and make that yellow. And we'll go ahead and copy this format down. And then the mean, and this one's going to be equal to, remember the squared error is here. The mean squared error is like average. So it's this divided by the count. How many of these are we, are we averaging? That many? Close the parentheses. And then, so our answer is, um, I'm just going to type alpha alpha. equals 0 0.01 is the better forecast. Uh, and then I say using MSE, right? So that's the answer. That's the answer to A. The other ones are just as simple. Uh, we want to do M M A E, which is uh, is uh, M A E is part B. We want to do the mean absolute error. Well, the mean absolute error is right here, right? And where we calculate it using this. So the first one would be equal to this divided by the count. How many of them are there? There's this many absolute errors. Close the parentheses. And this one would be equal to this divided by count. That. Close the parentheses. Let's go ahead and format both of these the same. So in this case, also, we could have the same the answer here. Copy. 2.1 is lo lower. And I'm going to say using M A E here. So that's my answer there. So I still would use alpha 0.1. And finally, uh, let's do the last one, the mean, the mean absolute percent error, which would be right here. And I'm going fast because I'm trying to keep this video short. I think you guys are getting the idea. So then probably once we do a few of them, it's pretty quick. So the absolute percent error is this last column. So it's going to be equal to this divided by the count of these. And this one's going to be equal to this divided by the count of these. Okay, and we'll format these again. Copy the format from above. Of course, we don't want to, we want to put that back to percent. Take it out two places. And again, the answer is going to be use alpha is using mean absolute percent. Whoops, using. And why is it the better forecast? Because alpha is one, we have a lower mean absolute percent error. Now these, this is kind of, not always are these going to give you the same answer. Like this one is said alpha 0.1 for all three. Sometimes that doesn't work out that way. So anyway, so that's how you would forecast using exponential smoothing. And then we have the different diagnostic tools we went over. Mean, mean squared error, mean absolute error, and mean absolute percent error. Um, the one you see the most is probably this one and this one. You don't see mean absolute percent error very much, but that works fine too. And uh, so hopefully that helps. I'm going to have my picture come up here. If you like this video, please subscribe. And then also like the video. If you do that, that will probably encourage me to do more videos. So hope that helped. Thank you.